Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be uh, trying to finish off the staves, which I've got quite a few staves. I've got the Serpent Lord, uh, the Chromatic Ire, the Salamander, the Skull Collector, the Spire of Lazarus, the Iron Jangbong, and the Razor Switch left to go over as far as staves are concerned. Uh, but today we're going to start with the Serpent Lord Longstaff, which actually has some interesting uses other than just simply being a useless stick. And as we go over it, you'll understand why. Uh, so right off the bat, the Servant Lord is, of course, a long staff. So it is a relatively low-level unique. It uh, is a level 9. It has no requirements. And uh, it has a fast class attack speed. Uh, it has 40% enhanced damage, which does vary from 30 to 40. Uh, it also has negative 50% target's defense, which is pretty good, actually. And is going to make sure you're going to hit most of your targets when you're bonking things with this. Uh, it also has plus 12 poison damage over 3 seconds, which at level 9 actually comes in pretty handy. Uh, it also has a massive 100% mana stolen per hit, which unfortunately doesn't really do a whole lot uh, because of the relatively low physical damage on the weapon. So if you hit a target with this thing, um, you know, with a melee attack, um, we're really looking at a relatively low amount of physical damage. And to give you an idea, we have to, like, reduce... All of our elemental damage down to zero, which I'm sure I've got tons of sitting around on random items. Uh, but once you have re removed all of your elemental damage, you come to a physical damage that is extremely low. And 100% of relatively nothing is still relatively nothing. Um, and, but there is an interesting use for the 100% mana steal per hit, which I'll talk about later. Uh, we also have plus 10 to mana, which is a pretty nice little bump for a low-level character. And it can certainly come in handy. Um, and 50% uh, poison resistance, which of course is going to come in extremely handy when you fight Andorial, uh, because she is of course spamming poison attacks. And we have negative one light radius, uh, which is a moot point, and 50% bonus damage to undead, which actually comes into play for the mana steal, because of course we're bonking things. <laughs> um, now I think it's fair to point out that the weapon has some pretty nice statistics for bonking things. It's also very green. It almost, almost looks lime green. Um, in the old version, I think it's uh, extremely lime green. I remember I remember it being, like, extremely green in the old version. And um, this is a weapon that has one specific use, which is actually pretty darn cool. Um, and it involves a kick sin. So kick sins don't get their damage from their weapon. They get their damage from their boots, obviously. So if you utilize this on a kick sin, you get some very nice effects. You get the negative 50% target's defense on your kicks, which will help your kicks land more often. You get the poison damage on your kicks, which will help your kicks dish out more damage. Um, and the 100% mana steal also comes in handy for the kick sin, uh, because it allows you to utilize your kicks for damage to apply that mana steal, uh, which definitely comes in handy uh, as well. I mean, so basically, at a low level, as a kick sin, you can effectively get yourself 50% target's defense, a negative target's defense, a decent amount of poison damage, 100% mana steal, a decent amount of mana, and 50% poison resistance, all in a nice little neat package for you as a kick sin, uh, which you could, of course, combine with some other items that you might find along your journeys. Uh, the main thing with a kick sin, especially a low-level kick sin, is to find yourself the highest pair of boots that you can um, doesn't matter what they are, uh, just uh, even if they're just white, because your kick damage is directly proportionate to the quality of the boots that you're wearing. So you want to find nightmare boots if you can. You want to find higher tier nightmare boots. Eventually, you want to find elite boots. And as you go forward, uh, you know the higher your kick damage goes, the better. So, like for instance, with this particular staff at level nine, um, you'd probably be looking at something like chain boots, or maybe even if you can get your hands on like Saigons or something like that. Um, or you can go even higher and get yourself one of the elite pair of boots, which have even higher kick damage. Um, Serpent Lord Staff is definitely one of those oddities, which doesn't really work very well past normal difficulty, though, uh, because, unfortunately, it just doesn't really do a lot of damage. Um, as a sorceress, you could totally walk outside of town, and you can just bonk things in that normal difficulty. It, it, it does decent enough damage at, uh, at 18 to 37 that you're going to kill most monsters. 
The Man of Steel gimmick doesn't really work very well with the staff, which is unfortunate because it just doesn't do the kind of damage that's needed to do to take advantage of the Man of Steel. Uh, but all in all, I mean, it functions well as the purpose that it's trying to function. And it does have a very interesting niche use with a kicks in, um, which, you know, you guys might have fun playing with one day. If you find one of these and you want to level up a low-level kicks in with something like this, grab yourself a pair of Saigon boots, throw this thing on, and uh, and have fun with uh, basically never running out of mana with 100% mana stolen per hit and some pretty nice kick damage. With 50% negative targets defense, too, which is going to make it very easy for you to hit your targets. Uh, which does work on bosses, by the way, which is pretty cool. Now, because this is a melee staff, and because its entire purpose is to be meleeed, I'm not going to be upgrading every staff, mind you. Uh, this one is definitely one that I'm going to upgrade. So we're going to type, put in a Ral, a Soul, and a Perfect Emerald. And this one's going to upgrade from 2 to 11, level 9, to 11 to 36, with 25 strength requirement at level 28. So as you can see, the damage goes up quite nicely, and it actually might steal the mana that it was originally intended to steal, the 100% mana. Because now when you bonk things, you're going to be stealing a hell of a lot more than your original uh, version. The Ethereal version can also be upgraded with a Rowl Soul and a Perfect Emerald uh, from 4 to 16, level 9. Oop, that is not a Soul Rune. You hacker, you! Get out of here, you little punk! Uh, to 16 to 54 damage, 15 strength, level 28. Um, not exactly the best upgrade in the world, but in terms of the mana steal, like if you're actually trying to bonk things around level 28, which you probably shouldn't be, because by then things are going to be kicking your butt. Um, if you did hit something with a negative 50% target's defense, you probably could. 100% uh, mana steal is going to net, net you a lot more back than it did previously. If you take a look at my damage now, I'm doing like 37 to 91, you know, minus the 12... So we're, we're hitting for like an average of about 50 mana. So every time I hit, I'll be stealing back like 50 mana, which is certainly not bad. Um, and of course, we can upgrade this one more time to its elite tier with a Pull, a Lum, and a Perfect Emerald. And it's going to go from 11 to 36, 25 strength, level 28, to the Stalagmite Staff, 105 to 149, 35 dex, 63 strength, level 61, uh, actually, a hell of a lot more better, mo better damage with 100% mana steal. That actually is probably going to steal back quite a large amount of mana per hit, um, to the point of absurdity, I would assume. Um, I kind of want to like bonk something and just see, like really quickly, just do like a single bonk on something with empty mana. And these guys don't really have the hit points, though, do they? I was just thinking that. Don't they actually have to have the hit points for me to steal it back? I mean, it is coming back pretty quickly. I'm not going to lie. But uh, I think that's due in part to my regeneration. Definitely not quite as much as I thought it was going to be. Of course, utilizing things like enchant and, uh, and other stuff could definitely bring up your damage. But it's not going to bring up the amount of mana stolen per hit because it's not physical damage. Hmm. Uh, the Ethereal version can also be upgraded from 16 to 54, 15 strength, level 28, to 156, 224, 25 dex, 53 strength, level 61. Um, all in all, I'm not really too impressed with the Serpent Lord, um, other than its niche use on a Kixen. It really doesn't have a whole lot of use outside Normal Difficulty Act 1, and even then, by the time you get to a point where you might want to upgrade it, um, your sorceress by then definitely should not be in melee combat, uh, and, uh, and I would avoid that. The kickstin doesn't need to upgrade it because the kickstin is not utilizing the damage on the weapon, and, uh, and quite honestly, it should just stay as a low-tier weapon. Uh, there's really no reason to upgrade this at all. Um, you could, however, socket it, which could be interesting. And what would you put in it? Well, an Eth rune. Um, it already has 50% negative targets defense with 100% mana steal. And if you were using this on a kick in, you could socket it, throw an Eth rune in there, get 75% negative targets defense, and guarantee all of your kicks would be landing. And, uh, of course, you'd still get that really sexy 100% mana stolen per hit. Uh, let's take a really quick look over on Silo's Pen and see where we could potentially find this item if we wanted to get our hands on... The Serpent Lord. 
Uh, is it the Serpent Lord or is it just Serpent Lord? It's just Serpent Lord. It's not the Serpent Lord. Well, skippity doo da, my bad, Serpent Lord. Shippity doo, pippity boo. <laughs> Uh, so let's do about 50% magic fine since this is a level 9 item. And, uh, of course, normal difficulty, bosses. Uh, so it looks like normal Andoriel has a pretty decent chance at 1 in 300. Uh, but honestly, by the time you kill Andoriel, it's not really worth using anymore. I would not utilize that in Act 2. Um, super uniques. Uh, Bone Ash in the Cathedral as your best bet at 1 in 2,335. A little late, honestly. Uh, Smith in the Barracks. Not really a lot of good options for low-level finds on this thing. I mean, regular monsters. Reg regular regulars. I mean, it does drop in Catacombs. A lot of Act 2 monsters I'm seeing on here. Not a whole lot of Act 1 monsters, which is unfortunate because, quite honestly, this is not really worth using outside of Act 1, in my opinion. It's definitely one of those items that I would probably never use outside of Act 1 difficulty on an actual sorceress uh, or character who was just trying to utilize this you know, as a low-level item, like a level 9 item. Um, by the time you got to Act 2, you're definitely going to be upgrading to something else. The damage just isn't there. You're not going to be able to upgrade it because it's like ridiculously higher level to upgrade and you don't have the runes and then on top of that um, if you're an assassin you're probably not going to upgrade it um, kicksins could get some pretty good use out of this but um, it does look like it might be difficult to find one early on I'm not really sure hmm. anyway as always I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my uh, videos even when we're talking about a sneaky snake a, snake, a sneaky snake and uh, as always Keep watching.